everyone, Dr. Susan Brown here, Director of the Center for Better Bones and your bone health nutritionist. Today we're going to continue talking a little tad bit about bone density testing. So many women I see are confused about the bone density test and more important, they're often scared because of their results. So I want you to empower you by, through understanding more about the test. Today's little topic relates to this question of actually what bones are tested. So frequently, I find that people don't understand what's being tested. So let's go over it just quickly. There's two major bones that they generally test. The bones of the hip, which are here, and the bones of the spine. Now the spine you're probably all familiar with. We have a lot of vertebral bodies. They only measure four. And those four vertebral bodies are lumbar, one, two, three, four. They're right here in the lower back. Right in the lower back are the ones that they tend to measure on the bone density test. Generally, what they do is they give you an average of all of these, and that's your T-score or your Z-score for the spine, just this particular area. If you wanted to know the whole spine, they have to do another test, or they can actually do an x-ray of the whole spine, or they can use the bone density machine to actually do a lateral view, a side view, and they can see the whole vertebral body. That is actually called a vertebral deformity assessment, and they can look at every vertebral body and see if there's any crushes, any deformities, any fractures. But in the standard bone density test, you'll get just these four vertebral bodies right here on the lower back. And you can sort of see a little bit the structure of each vertebral body. Sometimes you can really notice if the vertebral body is, if there's scoliosis, if there's a bending of the spine. We'll show you some of those a little bit later. The other bone that's measured bones are the hip bones. Now this is fun because you might have seen on your bone density report a discussion of neck, the bone density of the neck. And so many times the client says, wow, my neck bone density was low. They're thinking about the neck that connects the head to the rest of the body, but that's not the situation. The neck that they're talking about in the bone density test is the neck of the hip. And this is where your leg, of course, joins to the rest of the body, to the trunk of the body. And the hip is this, the, the, the neck of the hip is this narrow area here, that connection. And the ball joint is right along in here. And so in the bone density test of the hip, they measure several different spots on the hip. They measure the neck of the hip. They measure the trochanter, which is the leg. They can measure the Ward's triangle, another particular area. But what I like to look at is the, the, the total measurement. They also put together those different parts of the hip for a total hip bone density. So when you look at the bone density test and you see the hip, What's going to stand out to you is either the neck of the hip, some machines just report the neck, and some report the total hip. I prefer the total hip. I think it gives you a better average, but nonetheless, don't be confused. It's not the neck. It's not the neck of the, that connects the head to the body. It's this little thin area of where the ball joint connects the leg bone to the trunk of the body. So that's what you see on a bone density test as a rule. Now some bone density tests, in very specific situations, they can measure the arm. They'll measure the arm and the radius, and they'll measure different spots on the wrist. And that is frequently measured, particularly if a person has a parathyroid problem, because it's interesting, when the cause of bone loss is parathyroid hormone, you often find an accelerated loss in the wrist when you might not see it in other parts of the body. But for the average person, you're gonna see a hip bone density and a spine bone density. Remember that if you're in the menopausal transition, you can lose a lot during, these, uh, during that 10 years around menopause, maybe 10% of your bone mass. Some people lose 20%. When you're beyond menopause, when you get into your 60s or so, you should, you should have, be losing only one half percent or 1% if you're average. If you're on our program, you shouldn't be losing very much at all. You should be stable and maybe even building. If you're, if you're interested in bone density testing, if you want to understand that test, that x-ray that they do of the spine, if you want to understand it more thoroughly, 
We have produced a DVD. It's called How to Understand Your Bone Density Test. It's an hour or two where I go over many parts of the bone density test. It's kind of interesting because there's a lot you can learn from that test. So if you want more than just these little tips, if you've gotten interested, get on betterbones.com. You can pick up this DVD and it'll help you understand more about the bone density test. And as always, I want to remind you that we have many, many articles, much information on betterbones.com. Be sure to go there. If you're interested in keeping in touch with what's new in bone health, the natural nutritional approaches to maintaining and building bone, be sure to sign up for my blog on betterbones.com. Every week I send out a newsletter explaining the latest research on bone health. It's a lot of fun and a great way to build bone. At the same time, you build better bodies. Talk to you soon. We'll have another tip tomorrow.